Warning! I'm about to be very obvious. There is substantial math and chemistry. So, in the next few videos, we'll look at how chemists do math. We'll establish the quantitative rules that we'll obey when working with scientific numbers in quantitative measurements. We will also outline the rules that we will use and follow when we do computations, keeping track and preserving the quality of our precious significant figures. Remember, we must make sure that we preserve the correct number of significant figures because that's where we've stored our scientific precision in our measurements. So, let's get started. It is important in computations to know the number of significant figure digits in the measurement and the precision of the measurement, which is represented by the last significant digit. Remember, it's in this last digit that, was, that we guessed the measurement, and it contains the range of random error in the measurement. Let's first establish the rules that govern the counting of sig figs in a scientific number. First, every non-zero digit in a number is considered to be significant. There are three rules when considering zeros in a number. Zeros between two non-zero digits are always considered significant. For example, in the number 706.204, both zero values are considered significant. This value has six total significant figures, and the underlined four at the end is the digit that is assumed to be approximated or guessed. Look at the next number as we demonstrate the next two zero sig fig rules. Zeros right of the last non-zero decimal number are significant. For the number shown, the last two zeros right of the eight are significant. Zeros left of the first non-zero number are not significant. The four zeros left of the four are not significant. So in this number, we have six significant figures total, and the last zero on the right is the digit that is assumed to be approximated. Now we look at a specific case that causes some angst among many science students. Zeros to the right of an integer number are considered ambiguous if there's no decimal point at the end of the number. Let's demonstrate what I mean by looking at the integer value 4,500. We cannot figure out just by looking at this measurement which digit is the one that's being approximated. Is it the 5 or one of the two zeros at the end? This is a bad form of writing a scientific number and is considered incorrect. You may be thinking, well, let's rewrite it as 4,500 with a decimal, being careful to include a decimal point at the end. This is okay, but only if you know for sure that the last zero in the number is the last sig fig and the value being approximated. But what if the five or interior zero was supposed to be the last sig fig? We now can't include the decimal at the end if the five or interior zero are supposed to be the last sig figs because it misleads us in describing the precision correctly and identifying which digit was approximated in the measurement. The solution is to write integer numbers like this in scientific notation. We will see that this method of reporting the number will alleviate all the ambiguity of how many sig figs we might have. So let's talk about scientific notation. The normalized or standard form of writing a number in scientific notation is to write a decimal number with only one value to the left of the decimal point. That's the three in the example shown. And then multiply the number by a power of 10. If we need to rewrite the number to a different power of 10, I use a simple mnemonic device to remember how to rewrite that number. I remember Lars. For every movement of a decimal left, one space, we add one to the base 10 multiplier, and for every movement of a decimal right, we subtract one from the base 10 multiplier. For example, a number like 706.204, we can assume an analogous form of 706.204 times 10 to the 0th power, where 10 to the 0th power is equal to 1. 
To write the number in a normalized scientific notation, we move the decimal left two places. And using Lars, we now know that we must add 2 to the exponent to give us 7.06204 times 10 to the second power. Now let's get back to why we wanted to write our numbers this way. Amounts written in normalized scientific notation make it easy to count the number of sig figs. Every digit in a scientific notation value is significant. So the total number of sig figs in our example is 6, and the number at the end, the number 4 in this case, is assumed to be the approximated value. In writing the scientific notation for a value like 0 .000420, we're required to move the decimal to the right four decimal places and subtract 4 from the 0 exponent, giving us the final value 4.20 times 10 to the minus fourth power. The number has three sig figs, with the last 0 being the approximated value. Now let's return to the previous example that started this whole conversation about scientific notation in the first place, the integer number 4500. How would we rewrite this number in scientific notation? Would we write it as 4.5 times 10 to the third, or 4.50 times 10 to the third, or 4.500 times 10 to the third? The precision in the actual measurement will establish the last approximated number and will dictate which form is correct. Once this is known, it's an easy thing to write the number with the correct number of sig figs required to represent the precision correctly. And now, that value is no longer ambiguous. Another special case we run into in sig fig math is number values that must be considered exact, because at no time in the measurement did you have to approximate a digit for this number. If you had four marbles in your hand, you would count exactly four marbles. You would not have an approximate number of marbles. Exact values are considered perfect, and in computations are considered to have an infinite number of significant figures. Let's look at some examples of values considered to be exact in chemistry. Counting numbers, such as when we counted the marbles, are considered exact. In another example, we see that in the molecular formula for water, H2O, we know that exactly two hydrogen atoms and exactly one oxygen atom make up one molecule of water. There are integers in equations that are considered to be exact. For example, in the equation to calculate the diameter of a circle, which equals two times the radius, the number two in the equation is considered to be exact. When calculating the volume of a sphere, the equation is volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, we would consider the 4 and both 3's in the equation to be exact numbers. Many conversion factors are also considered to be exact. We are fortunate, actually, that all the SI prefix multipliers dealing with the SI units are exact. For example, in the conversion factors of 1 kilogram equals 1,000 grams, or 10 millimeters equals 1 centimeter, we consider all the numbers in these relationships to be exact. The conversion relationship linking the SI and U.S. customary units for mass, for pound, both numbers are considered exact in this conversion because in the U.S. customary system, we define the ideal pound in this way. There are several scientific constants or conversion factors which are not exact, but are known to a very high degree of accuracy and precision. For numbers known to high precision, we carry enough sig figs so that this value is not the limiting factor in the computations and the value determining the sig figs in the final result. One of the classic examples is the number pi, which can be described by any number of digits. I've shown 12 digits here, but it would be a considerable waste of time to type all those numbers into my calculator every time I wanted to use pi. For example, the volume of a sphere equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Let us say that the radius r is measured and found to be 5.64 centimeters, a value that we can assume to have only three sig figs as written. 
This is considered a given measured value in our computation and should be the number that limits the precision of the final answer. Knowing this, since all the other numbers are exact, the 4 and both 3s, we want to use a value for pi that has enough digits so that it's not the value with the lowest number of sig figs. We want to force the measured r value to be the number that is the least precise. Plus, we don't want to take forever to punch everything into our calculator. In this case, using a value like 3.1416 or 3.14156 for pi would be adequate. Again, the point is to force r, the given measured value, to be the value that determines the number of sig figs in the final numerical result. The same can be said for many scientific constants, such as the speed of light, which can be rounded off as needed. The most common example where we'll find ourselves determining a number to simplify the computations is mass or volume conversion factors, many of which are known to a very high precision but are not exact. For example, we'll probably want to terminate the conversion relationship between milliliters and fluid ounces. Again, how we round this value off will be dictated by the given measure value in the problem statement. Okay, that's enough for now. The next trick is to do actual computations with measurement values and figure out how many sig figs the answer should contain. Now, it probably should make sense, right, that the final value of a computational chain of measurements should be dependent on the weakest link, the least precise measurement. Well, we'll catch you later in the next video.